So namaskar uh, to everyone, wishing you all a very pleasant evening. And uh, it's a delight and an honor to be greeting you all in this very special press briefing which we have. Uh, thank you to all our uh, very distinguished friends from the media joining us today. And our very distinguished uh, guest speakers, our special invitees joining us on this very special occasion of uh, the Man Ki Baat, uh, the social revolution on radio, the social revolution through airwaves, uh, which is completing its uh, 100th episode. The 100th episode is going to be telecast on the 30th uh, of this month. Uh, it's uh, definitely a very historic and a milestone achievement. Uh, and we are here to celebrate. And at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, uh, the Institute for Competitiveness has come out uh, with a report uh, on it. So we are going to be witnessing the launch of the report on uh, Man Ki Baat. I would like to express our uh, heartfelt thanks and gratitude to our very eminent uh, guest speakers, our distinguished uh, guest of honor present with us, uh, Shri Gaurav Devedi Ji, the CEO of Prasar Bharati, and uh, Shri Akash Tripathi Ji, CEO of MyGov. Both of them, as we know, they have been a very integral part of Man Ki Baat, and I'm sure we are going to be uh, listening a lot many uh, behind the curtain story of uh, Man Ki Baat. Uh, so thank you for joining us. And may I request you to please uh, grace the day. Also, ladies and gentlemen, we have some very eminent uh, speakers who are joining us online also. Would like to <laughs> We have uh, Shri Pradeep Gupta, the uh, founder, chairman, and managing director of Access My India. They are our research partners, so thank you to him for joining. Dr. Thank Michael you. Green, the CEO, Social Progress Imperative. Again, he joins us uh, online. If you can just uh, switch on uh, the screen here so that we can just have a look at the speakers who are joining us online. Yeah. Dr. Mark uh, Esposito, the professor. Halt International Business School and Harvard University also joins us online. Shri Hari Milan, the country director, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are our supporting partners towards the report, uh, and they, he also joins us online. So, welcome to him. Dr. Amit Kapoor, the chairman of the Institute for Competitiveness, already here on the desk, the host, and uh, Ms. Uh, Arjuna Vyas, the nice director, Gates uh, Foundation. Ladies and gentlemen, um, I was in fact, uh, you know, going through a book, uh, which is uh, ki baat only, and uh, it was very interesting to know that uh, when Prime Minister mooted the idea of having this program, a talk show, talking to his uh, people, he said that he was on uh, radio, so that uh, took many of people by surprise. Because as we all know that he's a very tech-savvy person, he's on internet, on Facebook, using not many social media, he likes uh, connecting with people, talking to them in person also in the programs. And uh, so that came as a surprise, but then he was very clear that he wants to be on radio. And then his uh, officials, they came up uh, with a number of names, some of the names which is said of the program, PM Kesat Rubaru, Modi Vani. Varta Modi ji ke saath. And when they came up with these uh, nomenclatures to the Prime Minister, Prime Minister said that I have to do this in a very long way. I have to do this in a very long way. And that is where this uh, name actually came up. It was Krishna. Man ki baat. Really, if you see, and I'm sure all of us have uh, heard it. It uh, comes across, it's so very simple, so very soft in the nature of the message. And when you hear it, you actually feel that uh, it is not uh, the someone uh, talking, uh, a Pradhan Mantri or a leader as such talking. It is someone, uh, let's say a head of the family, Parivar Ka Mukhya, talking to his 140 crore Parivar Jani. That is how the connect he has been able to establish through some very real life anecdotes, uh, through very uh, citing people's achievements, uh, motivating them, inspiring them to be believing in themselves, to be believing in their roots, and to be contributing towards nation building. And if you listen to Man Ki Baat, and if you just close your eyes and you listen to Man Ki Baat, 
it feels as if a father or a friend or a well-wisher is actually talking to you. He's understanding your pain. And understanding the pain, he's suggesting you certain remedies, certain solutions. He's advising you when needing, needed. He's praising you for some exemplary uh, work. And there have been incidents, and people have quoted it. They were really taken by surprise when they heard their name in Man Ki Baat, or someone told them that Pradhan Mantri Ji ne aapka naam liya tha. So, and it gives a, a person actually feel so much uh, uh, proud, uh, that pride ki uh, Pradhan Mantri mere baare mein bhi jante hai. So that kind of excitement, enthusiasm he could generate. And that's the kind of connectivity established with people. And uh, Man Ki Baat actually speaks to the individual and not to a crowd. Though it knits uh, everyone together for that uh, positive change which it has been able to bring about. And something which uh, started this interaction, this relationship with the common man started on a very auspicious day of Vijay Dashmi on the 3rd of October 2014. And with every episode, this relationship has uh, further strengthened, it has gone all the more deeper. So the report which is uh, going to be released today, it basically analyzes uh, this connect which he has been able to establish with the citizen the citizen engagement which he has been able to bring about. This report is entitled Man Ki Baat, Advancing Progress Through Citizen Engagement. The report, ladies and gentlemen, is an assessment of Man Ki Baat. It makes an important and a very valuable contribution to our understanding of the unique radio show's impact and reach. Through this program, Prime Minister Modi has been able to reach to millions of people, <coughs> demonstrating the power of radio as a medium to connect with the masses, and then addressing topics that are current and very relevant for citizens. We have seen he talking to the students, board exams are coming, and he's talking to the students. He's uh, wishing them good luck. And then again, talking to the parents also, climate change, water, sanitation, toilets, a Pradhan Mantri talking, we had never heard that. So the report highlights this effectiveness of radio in informing and engaging the wider public, emphasizing its ability to facilitate communication and connection at a mass level. And before we take a more deeper dive into understanding this report and the outcome of the study which has been done, let's first start with a short video. This video has actually captured this huge wave of change that this show has been able to bring about, the change and the impact which it has uh, generated. Let's have a look at the video. चंपा देवी अपने गांव की महिलाओं को कूड़ा प्रबंधन यानी वेस्ट मैनेजमेंट सिखा रही है तब से आज तक जमीन और आसमान का फर्क हो गया है पहले लोग कचरा जहां के तहां फेंकते थे अब कूड़ादानी में ही लोग कचरा को फेंकते हैं चंपा जी ने सैकड़ों पेड़ भी लगाए हैं और उन्होंने अपने परिश्रम से एक हरा भरा वन तैयार कर दिया है गाँव में अफवाह फैली हुई थी कि टीका लेने से लोग मर रहे हैं अरे रे रे ये क्या बात की आपने डर है तो निकाल दीजिए आपको पता है ना मैंने खुद ने भी दोनों डोज लगवा लिए हैं। देखिए वैक्सीन नहीं लेना बहुत खतरनाक हो सकता है मन के बात कार्यक्रम का असर वास्तव में बहुत ज्यादा हुआ यदि ये बात नहीं होते तो शायद लोग यहाँ के टीकाकरण नहीं करवाते हमारे यहाँ गांव का पानी यदि गांव में रहेगा और खेत का पानी खेत में रहेगा तो हमारे सभी किसान भाइयों को जो है आर्थिक उपज होगी पहले ये था कि जैसे बारिश का पानी रोकने का कोई साधन नहीं था तो अब जो है खेत में मेड़ बनवाने से बारिश का पानी जो है खेतों में रुकता है अब ये सब लोग खेतों की मेड़ पर पेड़ लगाने की भी योजना बना रहे है यानी अब किसानों को पानी पेड़ और पैसा तीनों मिलेगा मन की बात मीन्स मन की बात इट्स ए टॉक फ्रॉम द हार्ट बी वर्क एट थ्री स्टेजेस ऑफ द प्रॉब्लम ऑफ प्लास्टिक पोल्यूशन वी आर वर्किंग ऑन मोर देन हंड्रेड एंड फिफ्टी थाउजेंड पीपल 
to make a zero garbage. It's not a very small thing. You, know? you saw the Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi. He himself went out and cleaned the beach. Now, why was he doing it? He was sending this message to this country. Is, as a Prime Minister, if I am stepped out cleaning, we all must do little, little things. The message was very clear from the Prime Minister saying that we all need to contribute. Nine people of a family died because of cancer over a period of 15 years. The deaths happened because the groundwater was arsenic contaminated. With help of technology, what if we can bring some solutions and improve their lives? उसी की दिशा में हमने फ्लैगशिप प्रोडक्ट है साफ वाटर करके जिसको हमने बनाया है आउट ऑफ फाइव लैक डेवलपर्स अक्रॉस दी वर्ल्ड फ्रॉम वन एटी नेशन सम एमिनेंट जजेस इंक्लूडिंग फॉर्मर यू एस प्रेसिडेंट बिल क्लिंटन अवॉर्डेड साफ वाटर एज ए ग्लोबल विनर अंडर दी सस्टेनेबिलिटी स्पेस योगा इम्प्रूव दी क्वालिटी ऑफ लाइफ वेदर योगा इम्प्रूव कॉम्प्लायस टू ट्रीटमेंट वेदर इट इंक्रीज दी लाइफ एक्सपेक्टेंसी whether it added to the cure of breast cancer aaj ke yug mein bhartiya chikitsa paddhatiyan jitni zyada evidence based hogi utni hi pure vishva mein unki swikaryata badhegi आई फील लेडीज एंड जेंटमैन मन की बात इज एक्चुअली एक शून्य पर स्थापित एक व्यक्ति की अभिव्यक्ति एंड दैट इज वाई इट हैज बीन एबल टू सो वेरी वेल रेजोनेट विद द पीपल सो वी नाउ इनवाइट द व्यूज ऑफ द सीईओ द ब्रॉडकास्टर ऑफ मन की बात प्रसार भारती इंडियाज नेशनल ब्रॉडकास्टर एंड ऑल्सो द प्रीमियर पब्लिक सर्विस ब्रॉडकास्टर ऑल इंडिया रेडियो एज वी ऑल नो दे हैव बीन सर्विंग टू इनफॉर्म टू एजुकेट एंड टू entertain the masses and really living up to the motto of bahujan hitaya bahujan sukhaya so i would like to invite uh, shri gorav devedi ji the ceo of prasad bharti for his uh, keynote address thank you अर्चना जी माय फ्रेंड एंड कॉलीग आकाश एंड माय ओल्ड फ्रेंड अमित इट्स इट्स सच अ प्लेजर टू बी हियर टुडे टू जॉइन दिस ओकेजन ऑफ द रिलीज ऑफ दिस रिपोर्ट ऑन मन की बात नाउ मन की बात इज मींस डिफरेंट थिंग्स टू डिफरेंट पीपल बट for me it's uh, the the connect has been actually from day one because 2014 october when man ki baat started at that time i was sitting where akash is sitting today at uh, mygov.in so right from the first episode or actually before the first episode uh we were told that uh, this radio program uh is being conceptualized and with our teams and the akashwani teams we were all uh, engaged in you know giving our own little contributions to the structure of the program and i still remember that even from the first episode itself when it was said that uh, the honorable pm would like to include thoughts and ideas from uh, people across the country we were wondering uh, how it would work out mygov itself was at that point of time a very nascent platform having started only in july so just about 3 months old at that time and we launch these uh, discussion spaces on uh, mygov and each time an episode was uh, coming up we found that there were literally thousands of uh, suggestions and ideas which were coming up mm-hmm. and as time went by and when i of course interacted with my 
uh, colleagues at uh, Akashwani, we found that it was not just us in Maigo. It was also in Akashwani, the letters, the postcards, the you know the huge number of uh, thoughts that people wanted to share. At that time, it started something maybe as a, a list of requests from uh, people across the country uh, as to what they would want uh, the PM to speak about. But when he started talking not only about issues, but also about the initiatives uh, that people across the country had taken at their own level in their villages, in their towns, in their communities. Then we found that this, uh, what we thought to be a torrent of messages and suggestions and letters was only the beginning. And that torrent soon turned into a flood. I mean, a few days before uh, the Monkey Bath episode was to be broadcast, <clears throat> I think we found it difficult to go back home just because we're just compiling and collecting that entire list was a huge task and uh, continues to be so. I mean, we've got, uh, MyGov is still at it. We are still at it. Emails, letters, uh, the discussion forums on MyGov. But the most interesting thing there is that it's not just people sharing thoughts and ideas, but the immense uh, volume of activity that is taking place across the country, where everybody in some way or the other, depending on their aptitude, depending on their uh, personal preferences, is working on something. And mobilizing people, mobilizing communities, not because they want to be featured on Monkey Park, but because each one of us has uh, this desire to improve our own circumstances, our own families, our communities, our nation. And Monkey Bath, by featuring uh, these success stories, uh, these uh, initiatives, has strengthened this bond of community and individual action for community benefit. And I think that is its biggest achievement. The survey that uh, was referred to just now, uh, it was commissioned last year by uh, Prasad Bharti uh, by, through IM Rotak, and the report just came out. Uh, the draft final report has just come out and about 10,000 uh, people were surveyed across the country in different parts. And we found that there were over 23 crore people 230 million people who religiously tune into every single episode of Monkey Bath. That's more than the population of possibly maybe barely less than 10 countries in the world probably or 15. Uh, but that's the number of people who have tuned into every single episode. There's another 40 crore plus, plus people, 400 million and above who have listened to several episodes and who would want to actually start listening to every episode, but due to various reasons, they're not able to. And there are at least 100 crore people out of our population of about 142 at this time, who have at least once heard an episode. It started as a radio program, then over a few years, uh, it was uh, thought that maybe it's also a good idea to convert it and visualize it as a radio, as a television program. So Doordarshan started visualizing that. So in Prasar Bharti, we are now doing not just the radio broadcast, but also the visualized television version. And then over a period of time, several private channels, both radio and TV started picking it up. And we've reached this situation where uh, not only uh, are the uh, Prasar Bharti channels on radio and TV uh, broadcasting it, but a very large number of uh, 
private uh, channel are also broadcastable. It is also live streamed on uh, digital media. And I think now there is pretty much no uh, uh, avenue of uh, expression, radio, TV, digital, which is not used uh, to broadcast one cable. A survey was conducted in 2018, uh, November, by Prasar Bharti. And we found that Mankibat itself, by its uh, acceptability and uh, by the nature of interest that it evinces in people, led a lot of people to start saying that it is because of Mankibat that they've come back to radio. So, uh, over a period of time where People used to think that radio is a dying medium. We've suddenly found that there is a lot of renewed interest in radio also. The number of people who are tuning in on digital and uh, the visual medium is larger than uh, the number of people who are listening to it on radio. But that's a matter of personal preference. So one way or the other, as I said, 23 crore, 40 crore plus, 100 crore people have tuned into or are regularly tuning in to Man Ki Baat. Another interesting aspect is that uh, the issues that are uh, raised there, the subjects uh, that are touched upon, also touch a chord in the minds of the listeners. So again, some surveys and details are there in the report, uh, which will be released uh, shortly. We find that the Google searches on those subjects tend to go up right after the broadcast. So, for example, when uh, uh, the PM was speaking about uh, teachers and the role of teachers in Teachers' Day, the number of searches for uh, words, keywords related to teaching and teachers went up by almost 1.8 times compared to the normal uh, search trends. So it's not just that people are listening to it on the radio or TV or on the live stream, but then they're also wanting to find out more about the subject. And that is why when he speaks about subjects that touch our daily lives, cleanliness, sanitation, community feeling, so these are all things that encourage people to work in that direction. So when he's spoken about Swachh Bharat, when he's spoken about, um, say, water conservation, when he's spoken about plantations, planting trees and greenery and climate change, so these are all things that have percolated down into the minds and hearts of the listeners. And I think every single effort in these directions, whether it is drinking water, whether it is sanitation, whether it is education, whether it is social infrastructure, these are all things that we need to strengthen to make our country a progressive and more developed country over a period of time. I think at this point of time, when we are about to reach this uh, landmark this milestone of uh, 100 episodes. It's an occasion for all, uh, each one of us to also look back at what are the subjects that have been talked about and what are the things uh, that he has uh, spoken about and see how we can incorporate those things into our lives so that each one of us can also play our own increasing role in developing a community feeling and a collective action within the country. Something as simple as wearing khadi. We just spoke about it and uh, we found that within a year or so, khadi sales reached their highest ever levels. And I'm wearing khadi. You know, I never wore khadi before that. I used to wear a lot of cotton, but never khadi. But these days, I only wear khadi that. So I'm also making my own little contribution there. So I commend uh, the foundation. I commend uh, my friend Amit and his team, all of us who work together on this report. And uh, 
I invite you all to tune in again this coming Sunday to listen to the 100th episode of Monkey Bar. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for uh, sharing your thoughts and uh, how uh, it has been able to touch the court of people. For it has been able to talk about uh, topics and uh, shoes which are that of a common man. And, uh, and that's the reason it has been able to cast that very impressive and massive footprint. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, for uh, sharing those uh, thoughts with us. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, the Institute for Competitiveness India is uh, an international initiative centered in India dedicated to enlarging and uh, purposeful disseminating of the body of research and knowledge on competition and strategy. The Institute studies competition and its implication for company strategy, the competitiveness of nations, regions, and cities, and thus generates guidelines and suggests and provides solutions for socioeconomic problems. Up next, we have a presentation on uh, the report, and I would like to request Dr. Amit Kapoor from the Institute for Competitiveness. He is the honorary chairman of the Institute. And we uh, request him, and in fact, uh, as he's going to be talking to us more on the report, we look into how the role of the citizen engagement in driving progress has been further enhanced and initiated uh, through Monkey Bar. The floor is all yours. Thank you. Uh, it's absolutely a pleasure to be here. In fact, uh, I must thank uh, uh, Gauravji for joining us here today. Uh, of course, uh, Akashji as well, uh, and people who are joining online, uh, and Archana, who, who's been uh, an absolutely a stunning uh, colleague towards when we were really compiling this work. So if you really look at this uh, whole idea of monkey bath, as Gaurajji was saying, it is one of the most stunning experiments on how do you really uh, connect with people. Uh, incidentally, uh, one of the U.S. presidents used radio way back in the 1940s, 50s, and there, there has been a huge connect that actually gets created there. This is something which helps you in really creating momentum towards uh, action. It is about citizen action. So this is a very interesting platform in terms of what was happening here. Uh, this doesn't work here. Oops. Can you just move the slide? Okay, so if you really look at it, there is something very interesting that is happening. If you look at the stories that have actually come across that we have been really talking about, it was about, say, like, there was a talk about, say, a rural tourism entrepreneur, Aditi Balbir. There was a talk about Madhav Bhatt Kalungala, uh, who was actually talking about groundwater and working in that area. If you he, There was a talk about Ram Shankar Verma, who established a solar energy to power a grain mill in Uttar Pradesh. If you really look at it, these were amazing actions that were actually taken by people. And all these people were moved to action by monkey bath per se. In fact, they were able to scale up as to whatever they were thinking. This was a hugely motivational exercise. This was actually an exercise wherein you, you were able to connect people together. You were able to push them towards further action. In fact, without hazarding a guess or whatever, if you really look at it, this has been a program which actually helps moving social development indicators within the country. There is clear evidence that is available that if you really look at the social progress index uh, from 2017 to 2021, we have seen a huge increase or uptick in social development over a period of time. And we can certainly say that something like monkey bath has been a motivational factor or at least creating that level of communication for people to take action. It was able to go to the level of the smallest community. When you say a smallest community, you were able to take it to the level of a village per se, and you were able to take action. So now if you really start looking at something like social progress within villages, what you would find is that there is a huge development in either water or issues of health, and that development is actually seen across districts as well. What we see is that this was an exercise wherein you were able to do collective action across 40 to 50 different parameters. A lot of us, we just simply talk about uh, what you call, there are just about four or five uh, distinct pillars and things. But if you dig deeper from issues of malnutrition to issues of education, to issues of groundwater, to issues of cleanliness, everything has actually been touched upon. 
if, if you really dig go uh, beyond this as well, this is a huge exercise, which is actually talking about a real application of nudge theory. How do we motivate people to move forward? Uh, in fact, this is an, uh, the second thing is about how many people have got connected. As Gaurati was saying, 100 crore people have already been on the platform or heard this program. Today, when we really talk about it, I think the world can actually learn from this kind of an initiative because what happens is that I'm able to motivate people across the board. It, today is the year of the G20, and I think the world leaders should look at something like this example. It is an art of communicating with the masses. It's the art of communicating with the citizens. It's about creating a movement of sorts. Uh, this is a hugely conversational exercise, personal toll, practical matter, and very, very interestingly, non-political. He was the prime minister as a person who was speaking to the country. He was not a representative of any political party when he was talking about it. And it was very clearly visible across the board. If you really look at any of the 99 episodes, we dug deeper into each episode. We read it through. We looked at the word analysis. What we did find is that it was not a single aspect which was about politics. It was all about development. It was all about citizens. It was all about community building. The thing was, the, one of the other things was inclusion for all. It was about citizen action. And there was, of course, highlighting uh, key issues of key public policy interventions that could have actually been done. Of course, there was a clear cut idea that when you talk about Swachh Bharat, the prime minister motivated people to make it as a movement of sorts within the country. There was a lot of governmental machinery that was working, but we need to realize that it is not just the government who can actually achieve things. It is about citizens as well. And that is what he was exactly able to do. When you communicate with people directly, when you're able to connect, that is the time when this exercise happens. Uh, if you really ask me what was the objective of the report, when we wanted to do this exercise, again, uh, it was an interesting research question, wherein we wanted to say, like, is there an impact of a radio program like this? There was not something of this sort that has happened in the last 30 to 40 years. If there is something like this that has not happened, can we understand as to what is the impact? What, what are the kind of analysis that we can do around it? Can we identify the prominently discussed thematic areas? Is there an action that can act, that is being driven through this? So we looked at all the 99 episodes and we ran through a fairly interesting methodology, which was driven through quantitative and qualitative analysis. We were looking at topical analysis and we were looking at hierarchical cluster clustering analysis as well. So it was not an exercise wherein we were just throwing it off the head. It was an exercise wherein we used sophisticated tools to see as to what are the kind of conversations that are actually being built up. So we said, okay, now let's try to understand what are the kind of topics that we are being, are being talked about. Out here, if you really look at the word count, a very simple uh, thing that we found is that these were the ideas that were being talked about out here, from agriculture to cleanliness, to the aspect of India, to yoga, to sports, to water, to technology, all the social issues that matter to the country, that matter for development. So this was an exercise, if you ask me, it was about engaging people with improving their lives. It was about ease of living and enhancing the ease of living as you would actually look at it and how we can contribute as citizens to that exercise itself. Uh, and then of course, uh, we looked at the dendogram. We wanted to understand as to what are the kind of relationships that actually exist between the various sets of words that are there. We found that there are very huge relationships that actually occur. So when you talk about agriculture, and then you're also talking about uh, the importance of agriculture. You talk about conservation of water. And of course, there is a whole huge idea of the world around this idea of conservation of water. So the issues that matter to us within the country were also the issues that matter to the world. Today, when you talk about a very simple thing, I, I see there is an amazing exercise that's happening in the country called life, lifestyle for environment. And that is exactly a reflection of whatever is being said in these programs. A lot of us don't really see it. But lifestyle for environment is about pushing people to really make the change and make the difference. Uh, the Sankey diagram, uh, wherein we try to actually understand as to what are the kind of relationships that exist between various sets of words. I would request you to go through the uh, material in the report as well. Uh, but going further, these were the five broad themes that came across very, very strongly. Cleanliness and sanitation. You talked about health. In fact, health became such an important subject over the last three years. And this was a communication medium which actually motivated people to uh, using vaccination. 
there was a huge level of vaccination hesitancy that did creep in at a certain point in time. But here is a person who said that you, you just saw that video as well, that it is something which is beneficial. It actually motivated people to think right. It was actually about science, and that is what was being delivered here. The idea of wellness, how do we actually make ourselves as citizens much more healthy? How do we really talk about wellness? Water conservation, water is a major issue, and that needs to be talked about. And of course, sustainable development. And if you really look at it, there are some amazing examples that were quoted within the study. So, you know, like, as you say, like, when, why do I have to talk about the case studies here? A simple example, it was not that the prime minister was actually going out and picking up something. He was really talking about grouse root people. They were talking about people who are possibly unknown to us. We, we don't even care or we don't even hear about them. Here is a person who said, let me understand as to how people are contributing to nation building. And these were the set of people who looked at or who were looked at. A simple example of this open defecation free Sampuran Nayasarai. This is a beautiful example of a, how a whole village who used to defecate in the pond that was there was actually became open defecation free. Today, that is a location where women are able to go freely. If you really ask me, uh, when you talk about it, it is also about security. So these are these additional issues that actually emerge that we really don't think about as to how it enhances women's safety over a period of time. It reduces crime. And these are the set of actions that were being taken. The second thing was the Project Sanpoon. It was about a very simple example of how malnutrition can actually affect. So it was a buddy program wherein malnutrition was something that was being covered or uh, associated and taken care of. There was a huge massive drop in malnutrition number in these uh, villages and districts. It became a whole you know, what do you call exercise across the state as well. And th that was a very clear evidence to see. The second, uh, one of the examples was a cancer treatment. In fact, a lot of us, like when you talk about yoga, uh, yoga is a fairly hugely cultural thing that we were having. And there is this whole, uh, what do you call, uh, discussion about it. But there is this medical, uh, what do you call, assessment that happened, like the, how Tata Memorial was actually using this. What we found was something very, very interesting, that there was a 15%, uh, what do you call, uh, uh, Im improvement in the disease-free survival. That means the quality of life of people was improving with a very simple exercise. And what it was associated with the kind of conversations that were actually happening. So you are able to move people or you're able to move mountains by a simple conversation that you were able to have with people. The, the Nagandi River Rejuvenation Project. This is again a very interesting example for a, for a river which was absolutely dry, which had fairly become dead. And it was about how villagers came together to understand the importance and they got it right. And these were the ideas that were discussed. So they were not, when we were discussing these ideas, what we did find is that there were a multiplier effect that actually happened across the country. And when I say that there is a whole huge improvement in quality of life, this is getting reflected in how things are happening across the country. It motivated people to make a difference. There was this very interesting case study that was again talked about, uh, about cleaning of, uh, uh, the the beaches. If you realize, four thousand tons of crap was actually removed from those beaches. It was a civilian effort. It was not that anybody else was involved. And now it has actually become a movement across the country. The moment it was talked about on Monkey Bar. So creating movements is the idea of these conversations. And of course, of course, SDGs itself. We cannot miss the point that there were huge sets of SDGs were, which were actually impacted through this exercise uh, that was done. It was about Green India Mission, uh, the SDG 6, SDG 11 was actually affected, health, SDG 3, water conservation, the programs were Jan Shakti Abhiyan, uh, Namami Gange, but the question is the civilian activity or the contribution was also affecting SDG 6, 12, 14, and 15. The same as the thing with a very simple thing like Fit India Movement. A lot of people will not realize, but there is an important element in quality education that Fit India movement fits into. The SDG goal say, says that we need to have sustainable education. We need to have fit children. And that was actually getting fitted here as well. So these are some very important examples. If you really look at the Monkey Bar effort to raise awareness or, and encourage uh, activism within consume, uh, citizens, it was something very, very powerful across the board. And many, many uh, what call SDGs again getting affected. But at the end of the day, if you really ask me, it was principally driven by the 5C principle, 
And that 5C was like citizen engagement, connecting with the masses, catalyzing collective action, cultural commitment, and celebrating change makers. And you know, like it is not about money, it is about recognition across the board. And the prime minister clearly understood it is about recognizing people. It is about celebrating people. And that is what has exactly happened on these programs. So if you really look at the citizen engagement, it was at the heart of the governance idea that we were really trying to develop. It is about a change in the governance model as a country that we are really looking at. If you really look at the whole idea of celebrating change makers of India, it's about celebrating the India, spirit of India's change makers. There, was th there were things that were happening across the board. Emphasis, there was an emphasis on the startup uh, idea itself. And look at how people started moving into that direction. A simple statement could actually move people into taking action. It was about connecting with the wider masses. Over 100 road people have got connected. There has not been a situation wherein close to about 70% or 75% of the country was connecting directly to the people. When you say directly, because there was a whole huge mechanism that was created, people were writing back and you were taking action. In fact, there, were, there was a person who wrote about this whole vaccination story. There was a letter that went to the prime minister's office and action was taken. So very simple reactions were actually being seen. Like to what are the kind of communications that happen? How we can motivate people? And this is what was done here. So it is about catalyzing collective progress towards achieving sustainable development goals. I would request you to look at the numbers on sustainable development. In fact, if you really look at the pace of change in sustainable development, you'll be surprised. The world will achieve SDGs as late as 2,175. The world is late on achieving SDGs. But I must tell you that India will achieve it at least 140 years in advance of the rest of the world. So there is a huge uh, implication as to what is really happening here. And then, of course, it is about cultural commitment. It is about celebrating ourselves. It's celebrating our culture that was coming through very, very strongly out here as well. And looking forward, I think I, there has to be a much deeper engagement as we go along. We need to talk about other set of things so uh, the people can really continue to move into the direction of engaging, creating those local movements. In fact, if you are able to listen to this, if you are able to understand the implications, we can actually do it within our communities itself. And that, that simple contribution is the idea. Because at the end of the day, the man is known by the contribution he makes. And I think it is our responsibility as citizens to really move into that direction and start making that contribution. So thank you. Uh, I would not really take much more of your time. I think I've already taken a lot of time. Thank you. Thank you uh, for talking to us uh, and taking us through this uh, case studies and all these uh, case studies, ladies and gentlemen, we, they have been collated from uh, different parts of the country. And we saw that how, you know, this man ki baat, man ka man se connection, it was able to establish and then stimulating minds, igniting minds and people feeling responsible and that sense of ownership came and they were doing it themselves, the work and also inspiring the others. Um, I will just uh, deviate from uh, the uh, slightly the schedule which we have uh, because uh, I believe uh, Mr. Mark uh, Esposito, he's uh, he's joined us online and uh, he's uh, has to leave for a meeting. Uh, so I would like to request Dr. Mark uh, Esposito, who's professor of the Harvard International Business School and Harvard University, to kindly share his remarks. Thank you very much. I hope you can hear me fine. And it's an honor to be part of the launch of this report. Uh, just now heard the words of Dr. Kapoor and uh, uh, is remarkable to uh, witness uh, as a known Indian, right? The uh, initiative that have directly reached uh, millions of people through the voice of the prime minister. A few reflections I'd like to make as uh, we're preparing for uh, more, more conversation and more guests on this panel. So the first thing is one of the challenges of many democracies and many challenges that we face these days is how do we create the degree of uh, direct information that goes from central structures to peripheries? One of the major problems we have in democracies is the level of information dissonance that sometimes happens uh, across uh, layers of administration, local governments, and, and of course, municipalities. Now, programs like the one that you're celebrating today are a perfect example that when it's becoming directly spoken by the prime minister, Many conversations are really sparkling. It's a perfect uh, relationship between the top down and the bottom up that is really inspiring uh, an engagement which is becoming civic in nature, but fundamentally is where democracy grows to the next level. 
uh, to, uh, uh, to like uh, second and subscribe to what Dr. Kapoor said, the uh, sustainability goals are a challenge for every single country. Uh, current business as usual, we will not see this uh, as a 2030 uh, celebration. But uh, when we see examples that are now directly engaging citizens at a much deeper level, we understand that sustainability is not only the environmental discourse, it's also the socioeconomic one. And engagement is really the foundation of a change of culture that is required for ambitious goals to really be in place. The SDG are uh, ambitious visions that the UN has launched for humanity at large, but how do we really implement and execute? It has to be in some form of project that really sparkling from multiple parts of the stakeholder universe. One of these will be directly speaking to uh, citizens. What you are celebrating today is the ability to understand that democracy 2.0 will actually carry the name of India moving forward. This is a conversation that I equally had the pleasure to run a few days ago uh, in, a, in a meeting with Dr. Kapoor and Dr. De Broy, where we actually really talk about the fatigue of the old systems and how do we actually re-engage re and energize democracy to the next value proposition. And he has to start from an initiative like this, where we are creating less uh, distance between citizens and the policymakers. It's also a fantastic opportunity for policymakers to have a sense of the reality in a country that is complex, in the whole in terms of the territory, is complex in terms of the different uh, socioeconomic uh, disparity that we have in India, but it's also important because of the demographical force that the country has. 1.4 billion people as the most populous country on earth, not only has to be celebrated as a number, but also as a wind of change, of possibility that we have in transforming. So uh, I like to share just my, my commandment for this initiative, this report is not only a report that is uh, capturing uh, data and conducting analysis, it's also the very beginning of a testament of uh, the prime minister towards an engagement that is much deeper, is actually much more related to serving people. It's a uh, remind us that public service fundamentally is about serving. And I think this is a clear message that hopefully other countries around the world will be inspired. We are in an era where we cannot easily benchmark anymore Neither we can do replication, but we can get inspired. And from this side of the world where I'm currently connecting from, I have to tell you, thank you for the inspiration you provide on a regular basis with initiatives of this nature. Back to you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for your views. And uh, it's good to also have the views of uh, people from outside and how you feel that Monkey Bath has been able to connect with people. It's more of a seva and a service and uh, also inspiring uh, other nations. Thank you for your remarks. Thank you. And uh, now I would like to invite uh, Shri Pradeep Gupta, the, uh, the founder, chairman, and managing director of Access My India. And Access My India is our research partners. I request him uh, to share his uh, insights on the process of identifying these special achievements and collating these case studies of people who have been profiled in this uh, study and uh, of those who have uh, inspired to take impactful action through the monkey bath. Mr. Gupta, ladies and gentlemen, is a leading uh, market researcher, uh, and uh, he's uh, India's top uh, psychologist, author of significant uh, books. In fact, uh, Access My India research model has been developed into a Harvard Business School case study as well. So over to Mr. Gupta. Yeah. Hello, everyone. I'm sure uh, you can all, uh, am I audible enough? Yeah, loud and clear. Yeah. Eminent uh, personality present here offline, online. So at Access My India, we do research and try to understand humankind and their behavior, and in fact, their needs, expectations, and aspirations. So that's our job. But this study, Monkey Bath, was a very special in that sense. And when it comes to Monkey Bath, for us, by uh, uh, by Honorable Prime Minister Narendra Modi is three basic things. One is the communication, second is the conviction, and the third is the transformation. When I say communication, whom you are communicating to? Here we are talking about 1.4 billion people, 600,000 plus villages, 6,500 cities and towns. There are 23 languages spoken. 
thousand plus dialects. Every fifty kilometer dialects get changed. So this is the universe our prime minister is trying to communicate to. When it comes to the communication, what is most important is to have a credible voice, the strong value proposition, and most importantly, the conviction. Because here we are talking about the human behavior, you know, human behavior, and it is very hard to change. So our team has visited many parts of this country and try and meet different, different people and try and witness how their lives has impacted before and after Man Ki Baat. आपको एक छोटी छोटी चीजें मैं बताने की कोशिश करूं तो एक मुंबई में बीचेस यू नो अंडर दी स्वच्छ भारत अभियान द बीच क्लीनिंग बीच क्लीनिंग इज वन थिंग बट उसके पहले जरूरी है कि आप कचरा फेंक रहे हैं एक कचरा फेंक रहे हैं और कचरे को फिर साफ कर रहे हैं ये जो इतना बड़ा चेंज है वो इतना आसान नहीं है पर्टिकुलरली बिहेवियर चेंज अगेन then the vaccination the covid vaccination in madhya pradesh when our people went there and meet they said people were very reluctant in fact two three months they were so reluctant not a single person had adopted for the vaccination and once they listened to prime minister and man ki baat and then in fact prime minister spoken to them and the prime minister ne pucha aap kyon nahi le rahe to unhone bataya some kind of a belief ki social media pe ye chal raha hai se ye hota hai wo hota hai and then prime minister mentioned that i myself has taken the vaccination aur ye sari ek galat dharana hai aapko aise nahi karna chahiye uske baad se line laga ke and within few days sara ka sara gaon jo hai wo vaccinate ho gaya so this, this is the kind of change we are talking here the waste management waste management particularly in rural india where there is no municipality facility to, to clean the garbage then man ki baat sunne ke baad logo ne khud ka hi cleaning aur khud ka hi kachre ka segregation in a right manner kiya and we have witnessed that in uttarakhand so this is the kind of a transformational change jo man ki baat has uh, ne leke zameen ke upar aaya aur itna bada change hai ki you cannot imagine you cannot imagine jo चेंज ऑफ हैबिट्स की जहां तक बात करें तो अभी थोड़े दिन पहले प्राइम मिनिस्टर बोल रहे थे कि आप जिम जाते हैं और जिम मोस्टली खासकर अर्बन इंडिया के अंदर आप कार में या व्हीकल के ऊपर जाते हैं और वो डेढ़ से दो किलोमीटर के दूरी पर होता है तो क्यों ना आप पैदल चल के या रनिंग करके जाए तो आपकी हेल्थ भी अच्छी बने और फ्यूल और पोल्यूशन का भी भला हो तो दीज आर द वेरी स्मॉल स्मॉल थिंग्स जो कि इतना बड़ा चेंज लेके आएगा ये सोच नहीं सकते थे बिकॉज हैबिट्स आर वेरी हार्ड टू चेंज वी हैव विटनेस मेनी अ टाइम्स यू नो इट्स ऑल अबाउट दैट कन्विक्शन एंड दी हु इज स्पीकिंग ऑल दीज थिंग्स दैट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एंड जो जमीन के ऊपर अक्रॉस द कंट्री नॉर्थ साउथ ईस्ट वेस्ट सेंट्रल वी हैव विजिटेड एवरीवेयर एंड सारे के सारे लोगों जिनको मिले हम लोग हमारी टीम मिली उन्होंने बताया ये तो कभी सोचा ही नहीं था इस तरह से कभी सोचा ही नहीं था जैसे कि प्राइम मिनिस्टर ने बताया और उसके बाद से उन्होंने कोशिश की और उसको फॉलो किया और उसके बाद से जो इम्पैक्ट आया और जो चेंज आया उनकी लाइफ में और एक बोलते हैं जीने का तरीका ही चेंज हो गया दिस इज वॉट इज दी आउटकम ऑफ दी मन की बात और इसका इम्पैक्ट थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू प्रदीप जी अपने विचारों को हमारे साथ साझा करने का और जैसे कि आपने कहा कि एक लोगों की uh, सोच बदली है जैसे भी ना एटीट्यूडल चेंज द बिहेवियरल चेंज और वो कहते हैं ना कि सोच बदल के देखिए सितारे बद, बदल जाएंगे नजर को बदलने की जरूरत नहीं है नजरिए को बदल के देखिए नजारे बदल जाएंगे एंड दैट्स इम्पैक्ट इट हैज बीन एबल टू क्रिएट थैंक यू सो वेरी मच फॉर शेयरिंग विद अस वी ऑल्सो हैव Mr Michael Green who has joined us uh, online I would now like to request him Michael Green who is the CEO of Social Progress Imperative and uh, I request him to share his thoughts with us Thank you very much and what a pleasure it is to be part of this celebration uh, of the achievements of Monkey Butt 
Um, I mean, obviously, I'm not a consumer of Monkey Bat, but I have a read with great pleasure uh, the report about what Monkey Bat has achieved. And I think what struck me is it really exemplifies the fundamental principles about communication. What do I mean by that? Well, let me go back to the, um, the English word communication and its root, which is the Latin verb communicare. Now, communicare is not a verb that means to talk, to speak, to shout, to hector, to broadcast. Communicare actually means to share. And I think fundamental communication is about sharing. And what strikes me about Monkey Bat is it exemplifies that principle of sharing in a number of ways. Let me go through those. The first of which is it's talking about a shared vision that we have as people. My organization, Social Progress Imperative, is collaborating with the Institute for Competitiveness and the Economic Advisory Council to the Prime Minister on, develop, on uh, social progress index for the states and districts of India. And what that really tries to do is map out, you know, the progress in terms of the real things that matter to real people. You know, can I get access to water? Have I got, got good food? Is my environment clean? Can my kids go to school? These are the things that really matter to us. And these are the things that are the topics of Monkey Butt. So Monkey Butt is talking about the issues that really matter to our shared humanity. And that, I think, is a critical feature. And they're also about the shared future of India. Um, Amit talked about the, you know, the aspirations that India has and the you know, very um, you know, aggressive development goals. And that's about changing that lived experience of people, that shared lived experience. And that's actually a global aspiration um, captured within the Sustainable Development Goals. That's a shared project for the world as a whole. So Monkey Butt, by feature focusing on these real things that matter to real people, is very much talking about a shared collective experience. The second way I think it's a shared experience is the way it's very, uh, you, know, um, you know, positively decided to reach out to people using different languages. So it's aimed to be inclusive as possible, to bring as many people in as possible. And also to do that, it's also relied on technology, um, the technology that of the radio, which we, we, like, we heard about earlier. And again, the radio may seem like old technology, but actually it's a way to ensure that everyone can participate. So Monkey Bat can be consumed by the digital natives, but it can also be con consumed by people in rural communities who've never even used a smartphone. Again, creating a shared collective uh, experience. And then the final piece I think in sharing is a really critical one, is that Monkey Bat is really sort of focused on allowing feedback, making this a conversation. So it's not just about broadcast, it's about hearing the voice of the citizen as well, whether that's through phoning in or writing in, or I was fascinated to hear about the Monkey Bat booths that are available to allow people to contribute. And this made me think back to um, uh, nearly 100 years ago, um, the German playwright Bertolt Brecht wrote an essay about the, uh, the radio as a means of communication. And he complained that the, the, the radio is not yet finished technology. He said the radio would be the most powerful tool in the world if only the listener could speak back and be heard. And that's what Monkey Bat has done. It's not just about broadcast. It's not just about, um, you know, the equivalent of, I think Amit was talking about Franklin Delano Roosevelt's fireside chats to the nation. It's also about conversation where people can speak back and be heard and share their own experience, which is critical to this process. So that's what fascinates me about Monkey Bat. It really exemplifies that idea about communication as being about sharing a shared experience, a shared goal, and a shared conversation. So it's been a great privilege to hear about it, and I look forward to hearing more of the conversation as it goes forward. Thank you, Michael. Thank you for your thoughts. So it's a shared experience, a shared uh, responsibility for a shared uh, prosperity. Uh, and uh, uh, as you mentioned, that it is a, a program which is uh, very uh, interactive. You know, it's not a monologue, just a dialogue or a, a talk coming from one side. We have seen it over the years becoming all the more interactive. In fact, in uh, September 2015, 
the MyGov portal, they started a new feature enabling people to call in and to share their thoughts. And a large proportion of people who were calling and uh, again sharing their thoughts and uh, through either through the uh, letters which were coming in or through these calls were from, again, not from uh, the uh, metropolitan uh, cities, but from the tier one, tier two, dur dur gaon se, dur daraz gaon se log communicate kar rahe apne bhavnaon ko unke saath share kar rahe the. And uh, Maiga platform has uh, become synonymous with public engagement in India. And the platform both adds to and learns from the whole citizen connect of this show. So I would now like to invite uh, Shri Akash Tripathi ji, the CEO of my gov to kindly share his thoughts uh, with us. Yo Prasad Bharti, Goru Devdi sir, Archana ji, Amit ji, friends from media, ladies and gentlemen, as we all know that Monkey Bath is completing 100 episodes this Sunday. I have been part of this program as CEO of MyGov since last six months. I can say that it's an incredible journey of 99 episodes so far. Monkey Bath is not just a Monkey Bath of our Prime Minister, but it's Jan Jan Ke Monkey Bath of our 1.42 billion citizens. This I can say with conviction because every month we receive on our micro platform suggestions, questions, and other feedback from citizens all across the country, not only through our discussion forum, but also through IBRS platform. Has not only revived uh, the old and seemingly obsolete media of radio, but also it has come as a breath of fresh air in this era of clutter of OTT, social media, and entertainment. In its journey of 99 episode, I can say one thing that Monkey Bath definitely has come as a fountain head of mass movements. In its very first episode, uh, if you remember, on 3rd of October 2014, which was a Vijaya Dashmi day, Honorable Prime Minister has uh, exhorted for a mass movement for clean India. And afterwards, we witnessed that it has become the one of the largest mass movement in the independent India which is called Swachh Bharat Abhiyan. And there are so many, it was just beginning, and there, there was a chain of mass movements which started through Monkey Bath, whether it is uh, called for Khadi, it is COVID vaccination, Har Ghar Tiranga Abhiyan, in which crores and crores of people participated at just one call, whether it is ODF, campaign against single-use plastic, Mission Life, as Amitji mentioned, uh, Vocal for Local, which has also become a mass movement. The phenomenal initiatives like Jan Oshadi Kendra, uh, Amrit Sarovas have also got their seeds sown in this Monkey Bath program. The other very significant dimension of uh, Monkey Bath is narration of inspiring stories of uh, Indian citizens in a very conversational and informal way of speaking. When Prime Minister narrates those uh, stories uh, in Monkey Bath, it seems as if some head of family or some um, uh, wise elderly person is sharing uh, their thoughts uh, with us. And these inspiring stories uh, basically covers the exemplary work done by our citizen across nook and corner of our country. And the areas in which they are working is as diverse as renewable energy on one side, education, traditional medicine, millets, startups, sports, and so on. So uh, these inspiring stories uh, also inspire other citizens to emulate uh, these citizens, and then it becomes a mass movement. And uh, they also become 
agents for socioeconomic change. Another important aspect of this show is emphasis on inclusiveness and diversity. The Prime Minister messages are often dedicated to a group of citizens like students, farmers, women. So it plays an, uh, and he encourages them to play an active role in shaping the country's future. And this focus on inclusiveness has given popularity to this show. As this uh, report highlights, the program has had, had an expansive impact, particularly in terms of building public participation, modeled towards addressing key challenges, and it continues to inspire change makers and celebrate change, uh, change makers who are contributing towards nation building. It's indeed a pleasure for me to be part of uh, the release of this report. And it's also a, an honor for me to be part of this Man Ki Baat program. Thank you. Thank you, Akashri, for sharing your thoughts. Uh, so once again, as he said, it's been Jan Bhagi Dari Se Badlav or Junai Bharat Ka Nirman Sabhi Ko Saath Leke Sabhi Ke Thoughts, Sabhi Ke Jo Vichar Hai Usko Samilit Karke Aage Bade. Um, and towards that, if you see, ladies and gentlemen, the Gates Foundation, they have been working in India now almost uh, for two decades, and they have been engaged in uh, various uh, sectors, especially in the area of health and towards uh, eradication of poverty. And they have been able to make uh, quite a bit of impact uh, for they have connected with the community, they have involved the community in their work. So it's again going to be very interesting. Uh, what's uh, been communicated and Manki Baat is where it has been able to relate to the community, relate to the people and Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation and they and um, uh, they have been able to work more with the people At the same time they've also helped us in the report. So I would now like to invite uh, Shri Hari Menon, again he's joining us online, the India Country Director Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation to please uh, share his uh, thoughts, his perspective on how you view the change uh, which has uh, been brought about uh, through Man Ki Baat and also the long-term change uh, potential of Man Ki Baat. Good evening and thank you very much. Uh, uh, Gaurav Ji, Akash Ji, uh, partners from uh, the Institute of Competitiveness, uh, Access My India, and uh, distinguished guest members of the media. Uh, firstly, apologies for not being able to join in person. I suffered a slip disc, so I am currently immobile. So uh, I will uh, make some brief comments and then hand over to my colleague Archana Vyas, who's present in the room. Uh, but uh, for for me, for uh, on behalf of the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, it's a true privilege to be part of you know these celebrations commemorating the upcoming 100th episode of Monkey Bath. Uh, I won't go uh, into you know all uh, the phenomenal change that Monkey Bath has actually helped achieve. The speakers before me have uh, covered this in some detail, and the report itself has a lot more. So I'll just uh, uh, speak briefly about you know why for the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation this is such a, a critical and crucial in, in, I mean innovation, not just for the change it's triggering in India. Uh, and uh, uh, Dr. Kapoor spoke about, you know, the potential for progress towards the SDGs, but also the potential lessons it holds, it holds for uh, other countries that are looking to make similar step, step change progress to get to the SDGs. Uh, so uh, the Gates Foundation has, uh, you know, been uh, present in India for 20 years. This is actually our 20th anniversary. Uh, and uh, over uh, these last two decades, uh, our work has focused on uh, a few sectors which resonate actually very well with the key themes that Man Ki Baat covers, you know, uh, health and wellness, nutrition, uh, sanitation, financial inclusion, agriculture, and uh, women's economic empowerment. And uh, what we find is, uh, you know, these days, uh, behavior change, communication, uh, you know, uh, shifting of social norms, these are among the biggest barriers to the adoption of solutions that enable progress. And through Man Ki Baat, what you have in India is, you know, India's most important influencer, Prime Minister Modi, uh, reaching out and lending his voice in a way that's, uh, as uh, uh, Professor Green mentioned, it's about sharing perspectives and 
uh, uh, you know, triggering action. So it's not just an information dissemination initiative. Uh, the beauty of Monkey Bath is the number of change makers it's actually been able to create. And for a country as uh, vast as India, as heterogeneous as India, uh, the only way we have sustainable development is if our people own the change. If the people feel that they are agents to someone else who's driving change, then I don't think we have sustainable progress. Uh, the only way we move forward is if, you know, uh, we have government, society, uh, you know, uh, partners, uh, including, you know, uh, the private sector, philanthropy like us, and of course, you know, the media working in a joint together way to drive uh, progress and never th has that been as important as it is now. You know, the COVID pandemic and the uh, global economic headwinds have caused a dramatic uh, setback to the progress uh, that we were seeing uh, pre-2019. India is one of the few countries that has actually done a great job of uh, catching up and making up for some of that loss. And in many ways, it is to India to set, uh, you know, the pathway for how the world uh, should get to the SDGs. And uh, it is our belief that learning from the examples of Monkey Bath, many of which are beautifully documented in the videos as well as uh, the report, uh, will, uh, you know, give us a template through which to get communities, people involved in, uh, you know, wanting and driving for change, because that's really the only uh, pathway for sustainability. So it is a privilege for us to be associated with uh, this report. Uh, I, I'm really sorry I'm not there, but my colleague Archana is, so I'm going to hand it over to her to uh, share some uh, additional perspectives, looking at, you know, the communications and the behavioral insights aspect of Monkey Bath. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Hari. Um, carrying forward um, in terms of the domain of, uh, you know, from the perspective of domain of behavior science and behavior change, I would just make about three key highlights. One is the fact that the Monkey Bath platform, as has as we've heard from the CEO of Prasar Bharti as well as CEO of MyGov, has been truly exemplary in terms of reaching vast majority of population. India has a diverse population urban as well as rural. And the platform actually does huge justice in terms of reaching these populations almost equally and effectively. It's almost like it's, it's um, you know, in a world where there's a lot of competition when it comes to airwaves as well as broadcasting, it has been a unifier. It's almost like a roadblock, such kind of appointment viewing as the CEO was speaking about, whether it is 23 crore people watching every episode or 40 crore people actually watching as many episodes or 100 crore people watching more than one episode. It just does not happen. It is truly a world exemplar. Um, also, um, you know, I'm sure that when the first episode was being telecast, it's, it's good to look back in terms of what a genius this platform has been, but I'm sure that I, I'm not, actually, I'm not very sure that, uh, you know, people had the vision that it'll be so successful. The language, the interactivity has been truly, truly unique. Um, and I can say, being a communications person, looking at different formats, uh, that for a long standing format of 100 episodes, such a kind of appointment viewership just does not happen. So it is it is truly a very, very unique intervention. The second thing that I would say is beyond reach, the platform has actually spurred individual action through people's participation. So it should not be misunderstood as just an outreach platform. It is actually what the access study has also demonstrated that it is an action oriented platform. And the third, Thing that I would say it's that the last one, especially from a social and behavior uh, change perspective, uh, that monkey bath actually exemplifies the, the theory uh, of positive deviance. Uh, many people, as far as public health is concerned, researchers, as well as implementers, have used positive devi deviance for development. There are actually five principles that I note from positive deviance. One is that the fact that communities possess the solutions and they have the expertise to address their own problems. The second one is the fact that communities can self-organize to derive solutions to their problems. And we saw that in the case of e either 
when beaches were being cleared, as well as in the case of Swachh Bharat Mission. The third one that I would say is communities possess the collective intelligence as well as the will for taking action, as we saw in the case of COVID and TB when it comes to uh, people actually getting together so that they can serve other TB patients. Um, the fourth one is the fact that positive deviance rests on the fundamentals of sustainability as well as lasting impact. And lastly, behavior change can be achieved only through the act of doing. It's amazing to see a platform which was seen as perhaps you know, an outreach to reach out to people can lead to people's action in a sustainable manner so that progress can be achieved. With that, I thank you and I hand it back to women. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Mr. Menon, and thank you to Archana for sharing your thoughts. And as I said, it has actually empowered uh, the communities to think and act. Uh, so that's the kind of impact uh, this uh, program has able to cast. And uh, thank you to all our speakers uh, for sharing uh, this positive impact which the program has been able to bring about. Uh, uh, hope you go through the entire report and the various uh, cases which have been here collated. So thank you, everyone. Thank you once again to Gauravji. Thank you to uh, Akashri. And uh, thank you to our online speakers also. At the end, uh, may I request all of you to kindly release the report and we'll have a group photograph. Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our friends from the media for joining us. And now we invite you for high tea. Thank you. Thank you.